Hello everyone, this is Jennifer N. Stewart, AKA Queen J. And today in the virtual studio, we have a very special guest, Ralph Garman. And I am dying to know, how does he feel about us writing the coattails of his famous show, The Ralph Report, for the last three episodes? Oh, I am dying to know. All this and more will be answered shortly, but please do me a favor first, like and subscribe. Enjoy the show. Well, good morning, everyone. This is Jennifer Wren Stewart. You are here with Easy Like a Lost episode with Ralph Garman. I am so excited today. All right, introductions first. We have Lindsay from Arkansas. She's got a PhD in Ralphology. <laughs> it's true. And we're going to really discover that today. Uh, and then we have the man with a urine stream thicker than Disney Plus, Ralph Garman. Yes. Hi. Yes. Oh, where was our where's our kids? Wake them up. Thank you. There Sorry, I'm sleepy because it's Sunday morning. I just gotta wake them up. So now I bet on a lot of shows that you go on, there is a lengthy introduction, starting with some of your accolades. You know, you got so many films that you've been Ted and yeah. uh, Million Ways to Die in the West, and then TV shows. Oh, so much stuff. You know, stand up comedy. Tw almost 20 years on k-rock one yeah. of the highest rated biggest things in the nation which i listened to religiously until you went to the medium of podcast and of course now avid podcast fan of your ralph report and so i feel like you know we, we're kind of we, we don't have to go through the the long list of stuff because i bet you a lot of people who are watching this right now know you from the ralph report and they know all this cool stuff because they've been watching you throughout all these years. Um, but we are going to try and uh, see if we can get you to play play around with some of the stuff that we're working with on this rather new show that we have. And so we kind of wanted to approach it a little bit differently. And I, I mentioned this a little bit on your Comcast show that this Crowd might be a little, what was that? Crowdcast. 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 Oh, did I say yeah. Comcast? You did. Beep. Yeah. So Crowdcast last night, we had a virtual cocktail party, which is one of the really fun things about the Ralph Report is you really get to kind of let loose and have fun. And there's a lot of interaction with your fans and we've got questions going. And so it's a ton of fun. And we got to plug that we were doing this today there. So that was really nice of you. And then, um, yeah, so we were basically saying this will be kind of different than some of your other stuff. And I didn't say why, but basically it's different because this is like you're talking dead. This is, I think, the first time you have had a show that is really dedicated about your show. It is the content that is about your content. So is this the first time that you've had such a show? Is this your walking dead, talking dead moment? Yes, it is. And it's, it's very exciting that the, the show is engaging enough or entertaining enough or people are enjoying it enough that that this would be a thing that somebody would want to do. So I'm I'm honored and humbled and appreciative that you guys uh, do a little deconstruction of the show. Well, there's so much. And, you know, Lindsay and I, when we just sit around and we're talking, basically we're, we end up just talking about the show anyway. So it happened very organically, very naturally, because there's so much good stuff in there. And well, it is- can I, can I say something really quick? Like <clears throat> The yes. community that's popped up, you, you mentioned it all the time on the show, Ralph, but really has been something that for a lot of people during this global pandemic has been a real bright spot and a real, you know, bit of strength to lean on in the Garmy, like the Garmy strong hashtag. Uh, I think we need to make that pop, but thank you for just bringing this community together. I just had to say that. It's, you know, it, I wish I could take credit for it. I really can. It sort of happened organically. I just started the show and the community that has risen up around it based on folks like yourself who not only enjoy the show, but then reach out to other people and you make friendships and it has been completely organic and completely unexpected and truly the, the best thing that has come out of this project is to watch that community grow and strengthen and be there for each other and help each other out emotionally and financially sometimes and you know, I don't know if I told the story on the air or not, but there was a listener of ours down in San Diego who was going through a breakup and she was kind of wigged out because she had to move her furniture out. And she, oh, I'm she, familiar. she got in touch with a, another Garmy member who they had never met face to face before. And he said, no, I'll go down there and I'll help you move. And it's stories like that over and over and over again that just are, it's an amazing phenomenon that has been 
a byproduct of this podcast that I do. I never saw it coming. Well, and I think you've cultivated it. I think you have such a positive attitude towards saying it's such a loving attitude, even though, you know, obviously you know, tons of comedy and it's biting and sarcastic and whatnot, but you know that it comes from a place of love and that comes through in the fans. So you've got this positive fan, you know, interaction. God, I could even imagine people getting married from, you know, who know each other that are Garmy members, which uh, would be kind of interesting. But I think that it's based off this premise and I'm curious to see what it is. I've heard you kind of state it different ways, but is there some type of a mantra that you run your decisions through that helps kind of guide you through these decisions? Decisions in terms of content uh, for the show? Uh, yeah, your podcast, you know, the, what you want to do with it, what you want to accomplish it, what kind of a voice you want to have through it. Those are all very sort of um, lofty, big picture goals that were not on my mind when I started the thing. It, you know, it came out of necessity. I had been, as you mentioned, almost 20 years on the radio and a new company came in and purchased that radio station and they gave me the boot. So there I was at the time married and uh, had a kid and had to earn a living. And I, I literally said, okay, what's the next step for me? And as is often the case, it was my pal, Kevin Smith, who came to my rescue. And he said, look, you have cultivated an audience from the radio, from the Hollywood Babylon, the other podcast that I do with Kevin Smith, um, with your TV work and all the things that you mentioned, he said, there are people out there who like what you do and are fans, and you no longer need some corporation to give you permission to, to deliver yourself to those people. You can do it on your own, start your own show, do a podcast. And so that it's really just came out of necessity and fear and panic that I didn't know how I was going to pay my bills. And <laughs> Uh, the, the over the larger overreaching things of, you know, what, how do I decide what I'm going to put on the show? It really was just, let me do something five days a week that people can listen to for an hour and change, whatever it ends up being, um, that entertains them, that just takes their minds off their problems. And hopefully we, we can become pals, you know, and I, I, I started the show every every episode by saying it's your old podcast pal Ralph Garman because yeah. I really want to foster some sense of friendship between myself and the people who are listening because that's a good thing that's a positive thing if you can hear that for an hour a day in your car or wherever it is that you listen then mm -hmm. you know it makes life a little bit better and that's always just been the goal so everything is sort of seen through that prism what can we do to, to to make someone smile or make someone laugh, whether it's dipping my balls in a test jacuzzi or forcing Eddie to eat something that's going to make him wretch. Those things are all just pointed towards giving somebody a laugh or-, or I gotta or respect the hustle. Like you've waxed your ass for this show. Like mm -hmm. you've, you've really taken some, some bodily risks in service of our entertainment. <laughs> well, yeah. And, and bared your soul. and last night some interesting information about spock uh but i <laughs> have long and prosper please please watch that show oh my goodness uh but a very very smart person someone who i idolize said people will will respond to authenticity mm. it kind of sums up what you just said because guess what you said that oh that was me that was you <laughs> that, was it, that guy is good that guy's good i know no, getting... i i've I learned that on the radio. You know, we were in a major market, LA, a major radio market, mm -hmm. where there was a lot of morning radio shows. And most of them were polished, produced to an inch of their lives, shows like Rick Dees and Ryan Seacrest after him. And it all sounded so fake and so homogenized. Put on. Yeah, yeah. And it didn't have any life to it, no grit and no guts. And the show that I became part of was famous for being sloppy and a little bit rough around the edges, but it always seemed fairly honest and the people were genuine. And that was an important lesson I learned early on, which especially being a, a guy who had no radio experience doing a morning show, I was an actor, you're right. So I didn't have a character to play and I didn't have any lines to read. So I was a little bit lost initially. And I said, the only way I'm gonna get through this is if I just put myself out there on Front Street and just be as much me as the format will allow. And that's when I, and people started responding to it. So I knew I was on the right track. I said, I'm just gonna be honest and, and be open on every level. If I'm pissed, I'm gonna be pissed. 
If I think mm -hmm. something's funny, I'm, I'm going to talk about that. If I, if I hate something, if I love something, I just tried to be as honest as possible. Yeah, I mean, who knew, I'm sure when you moved out here, that you had all of the key ingredients, just what it takes to be such a famous radio broadcaster, that that really brought out so many aspects of your talents that you couldn't have been more well-matched. You just didn't know it yet. It seems like you kind of went in. It was never my intention. Radio was the furthest thing from my mind, or is it farthest? I always get those mixed up. That's okay, we're not. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, no, I came out to be an actor. I was going to do sitcoms or, or movies or such, stuff like that. And then I started doing sketch and improv comedy. So I thought maybe I would end up on a sketch show like SNL or Mad yeah. TV or something like that. But radio was nothing I was interested in. I had no desire. It was Jimmy Kimmel, my friend Jimmy, who was doing the same morning radio show. He was doing, he was their sports guy on the air, but he was also writing a ton of stuff and doing characters and things. When he left to go do a thing called The Man Show on Comedy Central, uh, we had become friendly and he said, they're going to need somebody to do what I do for them now. When I leave, you should go on. And I was like, I don't want to do radio. That's not my thing. He said, trust me, even if you do it for a while, it's the best training ground in comedy because you have to create five days a week, fill five hours of content. You can't slack. It's like boot camp for, for content creation. And, um, that was intriguing to me. And I said, yeah, that sounds like it could be a pretty good exercise. I'll do that for a year or two. And it was 18 years. So. <laughs> 18 years later. Oh, and yeah, you got your flight hours for sure. But it was uh, it was a big blow to Southern California when you left. Uh, there was a lot of animosity. There was a lot of anger towards that. And when you popped up onto the podcast world, a lot of rejoicing. Yeah, I've been a very lucky guy in the, in the sense that People who love me are extremely loyal and they follow me, you know, wh whether it was K-Rock to Hollywood Babylon with Kevin Smith. But the same thing about Smith's fans, too, because there's a lot of people who listen to the Ralph Report who never listen to K-Rock. That they was know my me. entry point. Exactly. Like the people from the geographies outside of California are probably likely Babylon. You know, the UK kids for sure. Like they oh, yeah. all came to you via, you know, via Babel. And I think that's why... I, I match with their, you know, we've got that whole catalog in common, so it's fun. No, Kevin's fans, uh, well, Kevin was enormously generous to share his fan base with me initially by even doing the show with me. But over the years, we've been doing that show over a decade now, which is crazy. Wow. Um, those fans have been remarkably supportive of me. And it's, again, I just get lucky. Every time I, I reach a new group of people, they really seem to uh, click with what my sensibilities are, and then they stay with me wherever I go. They tend to to show up. And I don't think you're going to get rid of us now. We're just going to be like your reporters on the scene, in your okay. shadow, riding on your coattails as you try. try no, to move that's forward. the beauty. It's not a coattails <laughs> thing. It, it's I'll bring the whiskey. You're in. It's family. You know, it's it's art in creating art, which. Kevin Smith, I keep dropping his name, but I mean, he's a big well, influence on the podcast side of my career. And he always says, there's nothing more flattering or nothing that you should encourage more than other artists being inspired by what you're doing and then going off and creating some other little satellite project, whether it's something like you guys are doing or people starting their own podcasts or the, you know, the artwork that we get from people or the music that we get from people. I find it tremendously inspiring on my end and flattering that something that I do can provide a spark for someone else's creative process and have them go off and do something. So that's why I reached out to you guys and said I wanted to do this because I am 100% in support of anybody in the Garmin who's moving and doing something creative, no matter what it may be. So I just wanted to show my appreciation to you guys by coming on here. Well, and it's huge too, because not everyone has that kind of interaction with their fans. Some people really like to make you know, kind of draw that line between there. And I remember this is a funny, kind of a funny K-Rock story. So I wrote into you, oh my, I don't even want to say how many years ago, because it'll, you know, people start doing the math. But anyways, so I had wrote into you because I had a juicy story about someone who was in the, the news, maybe it had to do with a certain helicopter show that was popular in the day and a certain star of that helicopter show and uh, was in some shenanigans involving a family member of mine who I was so disgusted with at the time. So I was, I was like, oh, you know, this guy. So anyways, I was giving you some little juicy tidbit of news and uh, you wrote back to me and it was the nicest, just most caring 
like you took the time to really, you know, reach out to me and say, man, that it sounds like it sucks, you know, and, you know, I feel for you. And I was so struck by that because you just don't get that. Um, and especially, you know, with K-Rock being so huge, I'm sure you were getting millions and still continue to get millions of emails from your fans who all want to, they feel so connected to you that they feel like they can reach out and that, you know, but we also realize that, you know, you only have so much time to get to all of us. So I just yeah. want to say, hey, like, you have always been this guy, you know, this is definitely, this is your character. And I think the reason Kevin Smith and Seth MacFarlane and everyone gravitate towards you and and want you in all their pro projects and whatnot is because you are the guy, the, the real deal, the, the person you want to hang out with, not just at work, but after work to get a drink. Well, here's the thing about responding to people who like what you do or want to contribute. You have to remember, before I ever even got into this business for a long time, I was a fan of other people before I ever started being, you know, a creator. And so I understand that feeling. And if someone cares enough to reach out and either contribute a story idea or just say a nice word, if I have the time, I always try to, to, to reach back and to thank them because I, I remember what it was like to be that person. Hell, I'm still that person to a lot of other talented people in the world. But more importantly, it's just good business. I mean, not to, not to you know, monetize sure. it or put a, a cynical edge on it, but these are your bosses in many ways. And it pays to keep them happy and to, and to literally show them how much you appreciate their attention and the time that they commit and sometimes the money that they commit. It is good business to let, to let them know that you value them. And if you can ever make people feel valued that that is usually the right call absolutely yeah i and so I it kind of makes me wonder have you when you were younger did you ever write or reach out to a star and have a bad reaction where it was a little um, disappointing well anytime i didn't get a response was disappointing which is yeah. again why i try to respond as much as i can given the, the circumstances but no I, I i had bad experiences you know when i worked in radio meeting people that I really, whose work I really enjoyed and finding out they were a bit of an asshole or having uh -huh. a bad morning, I don't know. But uh, as a fan, as a kid, I got more responses back when I sent a fan letter out than I, than I didn't. And that was always amazing to me when I would get that envelope and open it up and see that sometimes handwritten note from people that I watched on TV or whatever. It's just, it was a thrill. And, you know, I do this thing with the Ralph Report, all the four star generals, we, we put them in a on a list and then I try to call five a month and have one-on-one -on -one phone conversations with people. And people invariably say when I talk to them on the phone, how surreal it is because here they're talking to someone they have listened to either on Babylon or the Ralph Report or, or K-Rock and they're having a conversation. And I remember that sensation so vividly when I would get a letter back from Starsky and Hutch or whoever I was <laughs> writing to as a little kid, you know? Yes. And it was, and then of course, meeting Adam West, my all time mm. hero mm. as a kid and not only meeting him, but then working with him and then becoming friends with him and his family. The, the, the fan creator dynamic has loomed large in my legend for my whole life. I, 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 on one side or the other of it, it has made an impact. And so I always try to keep that front of mind. Mm. Yeah, it's, that is a rare thing to be able to meet someone that you have idolized. Yeah. Uh, were you, I don't want to use the word scared, but was that intimidating at first? Were you, oh. you always are seem yeah. smooth. Okay. I was going to say, cause you're very smooth. No, I Hard met a ton you. of people when I was doing the morning radio. I mean, everybody who had something to sell, whether it was a TV show or a record or something would come on the show and, and talk about it. So you meet an enormous amount of celebrities in the course of a career that long and you get a little, um, used to it, I guess you could say. You get a little numb to the, the fame and fortune of some people when they walk through the door. But That's a good when point. you meet famous people that you adored as a kid, all that cool goes out the window. You get, <laughs> you feel like you're nine years old again. And when I first met with Adam, that was my reaction. I was tongue-tied and starstruck and nervous and all that stuff. And it took a while actually for me to calm down and start interacting with him as a person. And it wasn't really until we started working together, we did a couple different TV projects together. And then I would see him 
in the bullpen there waiting to record a family guy a lot when I was doing stuff there and he was still uh, the mayor. And it was when we had sort of that, I mean, I was never on his level, but there was a sense of um, an even playing field a little bit when we started working together, when we just became two performers versus TV star and super fan, you know? So that dynamic helped. And then eventually we just started hanging out because we liked each other and we would have dinners and, and just talk. And I was so happy by the end of our relationship just before he passed, the last few years of that relationship, we would hang out and the word Batman would never come up in conversation. You know, we'd talk about our, our parenting skills or lack thereof yeah. or marriage or life and stuff. And he just became my pal. So that was my, my favorite part of that relationship. It transformed your, you know, who you idolized, your hero into a personal friend. And yeah. not many people get that experience. Yeah, not many people want that experience. There's a lot of people who have the opposite experience where they meet their mm -hmm. heroes and they turn out to be assholes or drunks or, you know, they reject their uh, their friendship. And there's a lot, there's more stories that turn out bad than turn out good. I just got lucky because Adam was a sweet, wonderful, smart, funny guy who, uh, who was a, who was a blast to hang with. And he, and he felt the same about me, which was. Well, come on, overwhelming. Ralph. Come well, on. Overwhelming. I feel the same way you felt with Adam kind of, you know, like not to blow smoke, yeah, but. but you don't, you don't, you know, we never see ourselves as others see us. Right. So when he would, it was funny when he passed, we had a big uh, celebration in Los Angeles down at city hall and the mayor spoke and they shined the bat signal up on the, on city hall. And we had a, 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 a ceremony dedicated to his life and his career. And there must've been 10,000 people filling Pershing Square there, the public park in Los Angeles. And the family and the city asked me to be one of the people who spoke. It was Bert Ward, of course, who played Robin and myself and a few other people. And after it was all over, his lovely wife, Micheline, who's still a, uh, Marcel rather, I'm sorry, who's a, um, a lovely lady, she took me by the hand and she looked in my eyes. And this is a woman who just lost her husband. And she said, I need you to know he loved you. Oh my gosh. And I was gone. I was just a wreck after that because I felt that way about him. And it was for her to take the time out to make sure that I knew that. I mean, the family has been so good to me too. Um, it was just it was life altering. Just one of the great relationships of my life. So yeah, yeah. I miss him. Ah, oh, I miss him too. That's it. It was always interesting to watch your interactions with him. You know, following kind of your career and whatnot, and and to see what you were doing with him, knowing that he was an idol of yours, and just it. Yeah, it's yeah, that's a really cool thing. Um, and he is missed. Um, so we don't have that kind of followership yet. Um, <laughs> No, no one has a, yeah. Uh, small but highly engaged audience, I like Small but highly engaged. Yeah, in fact, uh, we have some big news. We finally have a hotline number. What? We have a hotline number, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. If you got something on your mind and you're drunk, let us your know. Thoughts, your feelings, your questions, <laughs> your thoughts, your feelings. Your <laughs> drunk call here. <laughs> That's Flip right. I, uh, I could use a theme for it too, by the All way. Right. What's, so, what's, the, what's the number? Yeah, so we've got 724. Is the area code? By the way, do you recognize that area code at all? Seven two four. No, it's for Pennsylvania. How oh, is it really? Yeah, it's fine, and it wasn't because it was a well. It could be a nod to you, but it's not anywhere near. It's actually on the the Pittsburgh side. Yeah. So, um, where which is where my my stepdad's from. So he thought that was hilarious. That's fine. So seven two four two Queen J. <laughs> two Queen J. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> don't get too excited uk we got some struggles so we did have some struggles from the uk people but uh, i did want to play a couple of the calls because i was just blown away that it, within the first week of providing said number we had some people call in <laughs> what these these could be our future i don't know super fans super fans is the word i was looking for thank you that's why that's why you're around all mm -hmm. right so here's our first caller Hi again, and yo ho, didn't see you from Arkansas. It's Sand here from the UK. I'm calling to wish you guys uh, good luck on the YouTube show. I've watched every episode so far, and I think it's safe to say that I am your biggest fan in the Already? UK. In my part of the UK. Probably. Definitely. So, good luck, 
and keep it up. Play me out, Johnny. <laughs> By the way, also probably first sound bite of, of the series because I was so happy. So most of the, the the response we're getting is positive, but you know what? I was shocked when I found that one of the calls wasn't so positive. It was actually pretty, this person was not happy. They were very disgruntled. They seem to have a bone to pick with us. Oh no. Uh-oh. And I, I mean, could you guess who that could possibly be, Ralph? Oh, uh, the name Cooperman springs to mind. <laughs> Let's oh, find out. Stop it. Hi, my name is John Cooperman, and I am calling to leave a message for your guest this morning, uh, Ralph Garman. Hey, Ralph, I, um, I hope you have a great time on this show this morning, this YouTube show or podcast, whatever the hell it is. Mm -hmm. Talk Man, I didn't know you were in trouble. I mean, the only reason I see you on a show like this is to serve out your community service, right? <laughs> I mean, the show would count as charity. It sucks. <laughs> it's got to be painful to do, but, you know. But you're a nice guy. Oh. You're a nice guy, Ralph. True, nice guy. So nice that whenever I decide to do my own podcast, you'll be on it, right? No excuses now. You want to be on this so bad. Oh, the girls never asked me to be on. Well, you're on it. So you're going to be on mine whenever I decide to create one. No excuses, man. None. Making a full loop. Yeah. Anyway, I hope you guys have a great show, which oh. I know really isn't possible. That's but sweet. Hey, I'm a nice guy, and I wish you the best. Anyway, have a good, uh, easy, easy like Sunday morning show. <laughs> Y'all can kiss my ass. <laughs> Unhinged. <laughs> we have Coop. <laughs> the, the Kraken has been released oh, on both Cooper shows man. now. So, oh you know what, though? He needs something to do, clearly. Oh, man. Uh, he needs a hobby. That's this is awesome. his hobby, I think, is calling in and being very disgruntled. But. Wow but maybe it will spur a podcast as well. So. You know, in John's, uh, to John's credit, he has carved a niche for himself <laughs> in being sort of the villain of the Ralph Report, which I think is a little bit of genius, quite frankly. Find the job no one wants to do, right? Exactly. It's genius, he's great at it, and he's one of the funniest people I know. He really? is a sweet, funny guy. Oh, I yeah. can't say that. No, no he's awful. He's, he's awful babe. and bitter. Yes. He's Bitter and so acerbic. Bitter and gracious. Mm. <laughs> All right. So, anyways, uh, I want everyone to call in. You know, grace our lines with your voice. Tell us anything that's on your mind. Uh, again, that number is seven two four two Queen J. So, give us a call uh, if you want to reach us by you know words and typing things out the old school way. Just look for us on our socials at Jen Ren Stewart. It's a great way to re reach me. Really, anywhere. All yeah. right. Yeah, we don't we don't have the special. You know, like. Ralph at the Ralph yet. That okay. is, that's a different level. We're not there yet. We haven't reached that, but someday. All right. So, uh, you, you've been so nice <laughs> to all of my, my musical musings that I've been throwing at your, uh, show. And Didn't I've been, have so been lucky to have them. Don't be silly. Your, your, your she content. Is that ridiculous. You've, yes. The, the content that you've created for the show, Lindsay's absolutely right. It's re remarkably well written and performed and produced and I am the lucky beneficiary of your talents so thank you so much for everything that you've sent in well thank you and I gotta say you just you're so creative it, it it truly is inspiring it I don't have control over it I literally just your stuff is so funny that immediately stuff pops into my head I'm like I gotta do this and I'll just be at the grocery store I'm like bananas oh crap uh patio lantern and then I like literally that happened to me and I, I kind of wrote it down on my grocery list and I came home and I recorded it. And wow. it's it's because your stuff is so funny. And that's, I don't know something if you if you appreciate how funny you are, but like, I don't laugh too hard at stuff. I am dying when I listen to you and Eddie and Steve and you guys together, it's like a multiplier effect. It's, it's crazy, but um, 
Yeah. So you have inspired people like a ripple effect. It's just an, or a coaching tree, as Eddie said, we've got all of these, you know, different kind of, you know, a higher, not hierarchy. I don't want to say that. What's a, what's a good, what's a good corporate term, Lindsay, for that org chart. We got Ralph here and then we got the org chart of all these little satellites or satellite. We're just, you know, sputnicking around. But so, you, have, you have some in the wings to debut is what you're saying. You well, have some songs and some new jingles. We, we do. We have jingles. We have stuff. I, I want to I wanna try them out on you. But um, first off, just wanted to note really quick, and I know we're kind of I'm, I'm taking yeah. a look at the tie. I saw you. I saw you. Uh, that you played the Movie Vault theme, which I was great. I did on Friday, yes. And some people didn't recognize what that came from, which is great. That means they're young. I know. They were like, wow, oh, that's like a hillbilly song. What is that? I was like, come on, Land of the Lost? You guys right. don't remember that? And then I realized I'm old, and so that's why. And yeah, I was I was in that same boat. Uh, so I had fun with that. And then, um, lo and behold, people actually sent in pictures, and this is crazy. I'm going to share it with you because I thought it was really, really interesting. It is an altar or shrine, if you will, to Slee Stacks. <laughs> I don't know if you can see wow, that on your screen. Yes, I'm seeing it right now. That's crazy. <laughs> the folks at home can see this right now too. This is in the living room of one of your listeners. This is actually Robert of, uh, he's a four-star general actually from Los Angeles. And he sent this in. It's um, an amazing altar with all the slea stack memorabilia, but we've got like Buddha, slea stack, needle points, dice. dice, which I think is great. I was kind of thinking, ooh, dice sets get like a good dnd set with slee stacks on them wow that is hardcore that's right that is and <laughs> so funny i used to go around my house with the the three fingers together going <laughs> yes <laughs> it was so good um but this brings up my one of our newest segments which is called pop pop altar And I want to use it as a segue into your pop altar because you have a uh, shrine to Batman. What? And, uh, yes. Either that or you're hoarding very strange things. Yeah, I don't know if you can see behind me. Uh, quick, it's just a portion of the collection. But yeah, I'm going to go into full screen mode so we can really, really see you and everything. There we go. So if there was a fire, Reggie knocks over a lantern because it's Reggie, right? House Why is on do I fire. have a lantern in my house? Because you live in the 1800s, Ralph. Oh, Go okay. with me. Nice. You're also wearing a nightshirt and a cap. Okay. In my mind. Anyways, All right. so he knocks, <laughs> he knocks over the, the candle, whatever. And you're running out. You can only grab one thing out of your collection. What is the most cherished thing you have in there? Oh, man. You're, <laughs> you're going to grab it right now, aren't you? Um... I, I think I'd have to say I have a pair of Adam's gloves that he wore during the filming of the series, a, a costume piece of his gloves. And I just love those. I got them framed up on the wall over here. He just Yay. Deep dive. Oh, cool. <gasps> See, Tim gave us a, a tour. Now we get a tour with Ralph. See, oh. the, right there in the middle. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's got red, the little... The the, the bat, background there. Yeah, those tiny are wings off of them. Gloves from his costume. Oh man, and I, I used to want to. I want to be in that bat cave so bad when I was younger. You and me both, sister. Oh. But um, I've got a few other costume pieces as well, so it would be hard to decide which one. But, but I that's love those gloves. So, but that's interesting. That is the one. You know, you grab it off the wall. You you run. <laughs> oh, that. Yeah, oh yeah. Sorry. Let's make sure we've got you just. Just right. There we go. Yeah. Perfectly done. Oh Director yes, that's what, that's what I would grab because that was the first uh, screen used piece of costuming of his that I ever got and it meant the world to me. And I've got a few other props and things from the actual show that are really sort of special to me because, you know, it's like, it's like a time machine. You're holding something that yeah. literally was used in the episode that you watched when you were eight years old that, that changed your life so it's it's this weird little time continuum that you that you have so that's why i love these collectibles so almost all my stuff is vintage stuff from the 60s and 70s because it's it's it takes me right back 
to, to that part of my life. You know? I know. And they bring such happiness. It's kind of like, I hate to bring up one vision because everyone else is, but I get that. I get that it transports you into a happy place. When you watch your, you know, your shows, mine is Star Trek Next Generation. I watch it all the time still, like daily. Um, but it, it makes me happy. It brings joy. So I, yeah. I totally get it. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you, you saw my new Corvette riders. Lindsay did not know who these people I were. I'm How young, dare you? I don't know things. She is are. young. We have to give her that. We have to yeah. forgive her. I know of them culturally. Whatever. I know of them from Ralph and Hollywood Babylon, though. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> oh, we got to play that game sometime, though. I like to recast old shows just with, you know, a whole new, like, who's hot right now. And it's always fun. I want to recast Love Boat since if everyone loves rebooting. Show, then it might be fun. What's new to you? Clearly green she's so green all right so we have been actually i feel really honored by getting to see some of your room getting to know you a little bit better uh the one thing on our mind right now is getting to know you even better than that so here's the question for you ralph garman mm -hmm. what's on your nightstand um uh lube <laughs> Do you have heated? Yeah, do you have this dispenser the with the no, heat? No, I haven't gotten the pulse yet. I'm waiting Not until it. I can have an interview with the creator of the pulse. And she and I have been going back and forth via email. She's very busy right now because she just landed an account with, um, I think it's Nordstrom is going to start carrying her, her product. Oh, wow. We had so her on last week, but you know, I could see. <laughs> um, yeah, so her 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 thing is blowing up, but I don't have the the heated uh, lube dispenser. No, uh, lube, a, a charging a pad for my phone. Um, Smart. Um, it's a clock. contact charger that's universal, right? So if a lady has an iPhone or an Android, it'll charge it. No, it's just for the Samsung. Wow, wow. Lindsay. For this one. <laughs> Stop the girl. It's BYOC. Bring your own charger. Don't worry, yeah. I'm always Kicks. charged. I'm Could not they... responsible for keeping people's phones charged. That's one thing I will not take on. Um, lamp and then a lamp. Smart. That's it. So very only four things on the nightstand. A clock, that's, a charger, lamp, and the loop. That's not bad. That is respectable. Oh my goodness. Respectable. Because we were talking about how some people have started a relationship and got to the stage where they went to the bedroom and they saw certain items on the nightstand that freaked them out a little and they turned the other way. Mm. Lindsay, you had a friend who just recently had a really horrible incident. I, did. I got to bring up my notes because she started, I asked her, I was just kind of doing some prep for the show. And I was like, okay, we got a segment called deal breakers. Like what's the deal breaker on your nightstand? And she goes, oh, I'll tell you what it is. And I got to do it in Amy's accent. Amy with the oh. good hair. She's got Southern, you know, just the higher the hair, the closer to Jesus. Oh, Amy. He was on a road trip to reconnect with an old flame from college. And he was working at this outdoor resort for the summer and had one of those cabins to himself. And so he gave her the key and she got there ahead of him. She walked in and her eyes were immediately drawn to the nightstand where there was an economy size jar of Vaseline with the lid off. Shout out Big Box Retail. And she's like, I had to look, you know, I did. Was it I had to look Kirkland? So she walked over and confirmed the lid was off and there was a hair inside. I had to leave. I was unwell deal broken. Wow. That one broke Amy. Uh, that's, that's bad. Like I'm the hair in it, I think was the get the dead. That's exactly. Off. And I think if you know, someone's coming over, clean up your game. Lid on it. Maybe yeah, that's bad planning. Put, put, yeah, put your best foot forward, especially if it's the first time. Maybe like by the fifth date, you can be a little sloppy. Leave some stuff out that kind of <laughs> leave the lid off. The, the little breadcrumbs to your true start. identity. Yeah, right. <laughs> they start piecing together. He had a cucumber on his nightstand, and then I saw a blow up doll hanging like, from the ceiling. <laughs> but start little. Yeah, the blow up one maybe further down in the dates. Uh, we actually asked our Twitter people too about this about. Um, Basically, we're trying to get people to reveal themselves to us. And so Deal Breakers is our segment where people kind of, you know, reveal what they wouldn't accept and what they've seen in the past. And so uh, I asked them, what are the top three things on your browser history right now? Oh, God. And I had some interesting. I mean, one of them was really, really funny, but I didn't realize it at first. At Pot of Thrones sent this in. He said, one, what should I have for dinner? I don't know. That's sweet. Two, is Taco Bell 
meat real? And then three, when will toilet paper be back in stock? And at first, at first I didn't get this connection, but I'm like, he's looking for what he wants for dinner. And then he's uh, like, Taco Bell, that sounds good. And like, wait, wait, I've heard that. Is there meat even real? Cause I've heard things about like Subway. And then if you've ever eaten at Taco Bell, you know exactly why he's looking it. for the, the toilet. Yes, yeah, that's right. The blowout. The, bl <laughs> the blowout. That might be a deal breaker if I walked in and saw that. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, there's, um, hmm. and then uh, at Randy the Dwarf noted three things and I thought it was cute because it was Mitch Hedberg, stay oh. effing calm, except for he used the real word. I'm all PG here. Uh, and then Rick the Steamboat, Steamboat Dragon, uh, which I thought props to him. I, I'm a fan of UFC, not so much WW. F, but I, I have mad respect. So I think that's really cool. But it got me thinking about Mitch Hedberg because he's one of my favorite comedians in that he does these very short bits and they're always funny. So you're laughing like at this constant with this rhythm, which is great. And he has a very specific way of talking. It, it's almost like data. If you know, <laughs> of course, I'm bringing in Star Trek. He doesn't use contractions. Right. Well, That's my world. Uh, you know, so he'll say does not as opposed to doesn't and things like that. Um, but that's someone who has always struck me as a really funny person. Another really great favorite, Eddie Izzard of mine. I've always mm -hmm. loved Monty Python humor. Um, Ralph Garman's this guy that I really think is funny. And <laughs> no, what I want to know really is not me. No one needs to hear what I, I like and think is funny. I really want to know who are some of your either influences or just favorite person to just sit down, listen, and laugh. You're talking about stand-ups? Yeah. Well, open it up to anything because like i love madeline khan she makes me laugh like nobody's business yeah but she's not a stand-up she was brilliant um you mentioned a few of my favorites eddie izzard is just genius um billy Connolly. i don't know if you know billy Connolly or not he is a, a uk stand-up scottish comedian who's been Ooh, around forever and um one of the funniest people on the planet one of the great storytellers i've ever had the pleasure of seeing live he will He'll do long form stories where he'll take you through an entire evening and you're ah. just, your sides are aching by the time he gets to the end of it. Just genius. They say that um, about the Scots. I hear that a lot. They are yarn spinners. Yeah. And he is one of the greats. Um, I, now that I think about it, a lot of my comic sensibility comes from British humor. You know, I grew up. Yes. That's, that must be why we all love you yes. so I much. I grew up as a, as a Beatles kid just being obsessed with the Beatles, which led me, it led me into all things sort of British and it led me to Python and then to Eddie Izzard and, and Billy Connolly and guys like that. And just, I love British humor, um, mm -hmm. but there's man, obviously Carlin and yes. Andy Kaufman and, you know, current guys like my, Patton Oswalt's a friend, but I still can watch his stand up. Oh my gosh. Jim Jeffries. Jim Jeffries. Jim Jeffries. Yeah, it's getting rough doing the Australian accent. <laughs> I'm, I'm lucky enough to have a lot of pals who right now are just some of my favorite comedians too. Bill Burr, I think, mm -hmm. very funny. There's a lot of oh my gosh, out. Bill Burr makes me die laughing. Bill Sorry, makes me look calm. You know, I, people used to say about me, "Why wow, you're some of your comedy is so angry and you go on these rants and stuff." And I was like, <laughs> Bill Burr makes me look like a grandmother. I'm just he's, he's so full of rage all the time. It makes me laugh. I love it. You guys I love, are both stand up fans. Have you seen the show Crashing on HBO with Pete? I, I have seen some of it. I Pete Holmes is great. Show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, some show, yeah, like um, Flight of the Concords, one of my favorite, you know, shows as well. Same kind of humor. Uh, has very much that sketch uh, feeling. Very Mr. Dry. Show, if you want to go with, you know, like an, an actual American brand. Again, dry humor, really great, very strange non sequitur segues. Uh, which are always fun for me. I love juxtaposition of just absurdities and they're always so good at that. Yeah. Sure. So, um, all right. So I, I was not uh, knowledgeable about Bill Connolly. So now I'm going to do a deep dive today. Look up Billy Connolly and you will, you'll thank me later for sure. Sadly, he's now it. battling Parkinson. So he has stopped performing live because he just feels like his timing is all off, but oh. go back and find some of his classic stuff and, and you will, you'll appreciate it. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I cannot wait. All right. The moment that I have been waiting for all week is to get a chance to draw with you. Oh, and so it's also time to premiere our new theme. Here we go. 
Mono, mono, head to head, we'll draw until one of us is dead. Don't be afraid, just do your best. It's a doodle doodle, not calculus. Wow, that's strong. I know, right? I take doodle dueling really seriously, clearly. I can tell. Uh, yeah, it's a big thing. So how this works is pretty simple. If you saw the other show with Tim, I did. You'll, you'll see. So I am not a drawer. I can now swiggle. My sketch back. <gasps> Legit, Ralph. Oh, yeah, just, I, came, I came to play. Did you steal that out of Dang. Olivia's room? <laughs> no, is it, I bought this. Are you no. going to have glitter, glitter crayon to draw with? Oh, I've got my Sharpie. OK. All right, I interrupted you, Lindsay. I'm sorry. Continue. Nope. So I'm going to draw a swiggle. <laughs> And you guys are going to recreate the squiggle, and then you'll have 45 seconds on the clock to... No, 60. We decided 60. to up it to 60 That's because true. last time short. I almost had a heart attack. It was too fast. So, and here's the thing. So, Ralph, I thought it would be really good to expand Lindsay's ability to do God. improv and what we call impromptu. When I was a nerd on the debate team in high school, we had to do a thing called impromptu, where you just give someone a subject and they've got to talk about it. And uh, so we're going to keep her on her feet. So I haven't told her what it's going to be for today, but your subject matter is speaking in French. You got to speak French for 60 seconds once we get going here. <laughs> okay. There's your All right. Sister. This is All the right. part now where we have to copy what she did, which yeah. is always hard because she's, it's like she's a. Well, I need it back on the, I don't have the big screen. I need her on the big screen to do that. Oh, you, you don't see her on the. Yeah, uh, I just got a little window of her. How do I? How do I I'm gonna. Happen? I'm going to. Let's see. Can you see. put her full screen? I think no, we can't see the it squiggle in too well. Left corner. Left corner. Or if I talk, then I should. If I'm the one that's talking, right? Will my box light up and you'll see me? And if I keep talking, and you guys don't say anything, then my box will stay lit up. The magic of Zoom. But this pandemic has been good for one thing: learning how to use Zoom. Yes, you do get to choose on Zoom how you see everyone. Sorry, I just started talking. So here, I should put, yeah. this is my version of what she did. Okay, this is, this is my version yes. of what she did. You did, wow. You did better. I think I had too much coffee too. Feeling very shaky right now. Yours is beautiful. Thank you. All right. All right, so are we, you tell us when we can start. Said, hey? Start. Oh, okay, here we go. Okay. D'accord, uh, je suis uh, très excité. Uh, pas excité, ça c'est un mot différent en français. Et pas heureusement, mais uh, c'est un mot sexuel en fait. La 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 la. Ben a quitté mes mots. <laughs> Et elle est, uh, elle, est, uh, uh, <laughs> elle est concentrée, très difficile. <laughs> c'est difficile de l'initier. Et vraiment, c'est un challenge pour moi parce que mon français est pas. Uh, bon, maintenant, <laughs> mais je, je, je pratique avec les petits chats à, votre, à, à mon travail et uh, 10 secondes remènent. <laughs> uh, je suis uh, presque pour la fin. Damn. We're done? Oh, really darn it. One minute on the books. Let's see your doodles. I All right. Just cheated. Darn it. I did a toucan. <gasps> That's so good. Oh my gosh. I love that toucan. I love okay. it. You know what I was okay. thinking is we got to like put that on some mugs now. So like every person we have that comes on and does a doodle doodle, there's got to be like the art, the merch that goes with their drawing. Take a picture of it and then send it to us and then we'll, uh, yes. we'll digitize it or whatever i at wow, least want right. to put put it up on the wall so i'm going to take a copy of that ralph because that's so cute all right i'm going to put yeah. mine up my uh, well, there we go that's pretty cool I, <laughs> I don't know what it is it's like a mosquito <laughs> yes it's it jeff is. it's jeff goldblum from the fly <laughs> this is from, it's brundle fly it's brundle fly it's his it's his uh kids drawing of dad yes going, going through thinking? the transition and now that you said that, I should have drawn the little transporter in the back. That, see, this is why you get paid the big bucks. Dang it. That's, mine is not okay. good. Yours is better. Excellent. No, you're no yours, I, I think Lindsay and I can agree. You definitely won. You won this round. And next time, practice at it. next time, sometime, if you ever come back, round two. You got it. Rematch. Yes. Yeah, in fact, I was, I was just thinking about this. So we called this a lost episode. And I didn't bring this up before, but it was really funny because Lindsay didn't know what a lost episode was. 
Hmm. She had never heard of that story. And so I was like, no, see a lost episode is like when you have a show that's been going for a while and then all of a sudden they're like, hey, now premiering tonight on ABC, the last episode of Gilligan's Island or right. whatnot. Or, or I Love Lucy, the, the, the Christmas special that never aired again. That never aired. Yeah, yeah, I got canned for some reason or just got shelved for whatever reason, maybe, you know, whatever events that were happening at the time because everything used to be live. Um, and so it was kind of funny because she didn't realize that what I was trying to do is make sure that you were number one. So we're saying that this oh, is the first episode and it was I lost. See. You got bumped. So you were- Nice in try. Indeed. Well, I only have so much to work with, so. Mm. All right, so we let me see so here. Much time left. We got time for about one more little closing bit. So okay, so I wanna topic. know, uh, timekeeper, do we have time to talk about the the uh, Ralph Report spat of the week before we go into yes. this new? Yes. Okay, all right. So Ralph, <laughs> last week there was a lot of talk about a certain conversation, and it was all around such an innocuous event. We had mm. the famous National Appreciation Day for dog biscuits, yes. and this spurred a huge conversation because Eddie was being Eddie and then right. there was this whole spat and it lasted like two days and I let like Eddie had a quote just about like you say the wrong word and you hear you know three days of 40 messages of people and he was like you know self-loathing and all that and so what was funny from this side of the I don't know on the headphones is that you guys have these lover spats that happen every now and then. And it's really, really kind of fun to watch because you know that obviously you, you love each other. But then I'm wondering if you're getting to the the part in the relationship kind of marriage where, you know, you're bickering. So so here's the thing, though. So like when you guys have these really funny lover spats, I'm calling yes. it, um, sometimes you'll slow it down and you'll you'll have drunk Eddie's thoughts. And those are insanely funny. And I for me, because my brain works in very weird ways, I saw this as, oh my God, what if this were translated in Spanish as like a new novella? And so I came up with this like idea of los muchachos de los pocos fuegas. <laughs> so, so this is an experimental thing that we won't do here right now, but Lindsay and I are, are maybe gonna record this as a bonus for this week where we have translated your whole conversation into Spanish using Google Translate. So it's very stilted. Wow. For, and then I wrote like the narration parts in English so people can follow along. And then the whole thing is just basically us ramping it up so that the sexual tension by the end is just, you know, novella palpable. style. It's palpable. Wow. So uh, yeah, so we might do that. That sounds insane and great. <laughs> We at least play the song, please. All right, let's do that. Yeah, we, we, we've got theme a theme at least. Everything. That's a start. Here we go. So awesome. you you do belong on a novella. That would be really fun. And it, we're, yeah. Kind of I gotta grow, I gotta grow my mustache back. I gotta grow my mustache back. You yeah, do. On the Joe Schmo show? Yes. Ralph. <laughs> Raul. Donde esta? It depends. <laughs> what eyebrow. Oh, we changed him to eyebrow. Eduardo. Hopefully he Eduardo doesn't mind thinks. that. Eduardo thinks. Eduardo. Como se dice? Dog biscuit. It depends. <laughs> we do have that information. I forget it right now. Pero. Yeah, Whoa. at least one time in a telenovela, they'll always yell uh, the, you know, girl dog, same in both languages, but para. Yeah. And there's, of course, one of those moments. So I'm going to score them, though. So we've got like the rising tension, you know, with the guitar going in the back and, and stuff like knows, that. She so just does funny. this for funsies. It is for funsies. Why else would that's, you do this? Right? It's for fun. Remarkable. Yes, absolutely. To keep us entertained. All right. So another exciting development. We have a new segment, and this is something that Lindsay has been waiting for all week because I always run my mouth and won't yes. stop. She's just, just <laughs> trying to get a, a word in. Uh, and Ralph, you're going to like it too, because this is something that you have quite, ex you have expertise in. I do not. Sports. Lindsay has her own sports segment. Of course, she also has her own sports segment theme because that's how we roll. So here we go. <laughs> it's time for sports talk. It's Lindsay sports talk. It's so fun because we waited up a week. 
It's time for sports talk. It's Lindsay Sports Talk. What kind of sports crap will Lindsay speak? It's time for sports talk. It's Lindsay Sports Talk. Reporting the latest agony of defeat. So grab your curling room. Head to the locker room. It's time for Easy LA Sports. Oh, so good. So I'm a sports dork, which is part of why I like fell in love with the Ralph Report right away when it debuted because I would have to check Rohrbacher for the game tape, but like, wasn't the Pyeongchang Olympics like the within like the first couple of months of the Ralph Report coming out? Yeah, Jay Busby, who does yeah. all our NFL stuff. And uh, I loved that we had our little Garmy sports reporter on the ground. He said, if you want me to uh, talk about the Olympic stuff, I'd be happy to do it. So yeah, he covered that very early on in the show. You're right. Yeah. And so, uh, Queen J is adorably clueless on subjects like sports and sonic screwdrivers. So I did want to know <laughs> what touch points Queen J has with sports. Like where, where is your sports knowledge, Jay? Oh, uh, okay. Mine's a little different. I played a lot of sports that were um, individual sports, you know? So like I did tennis <laughs> against a wall a lot. No, I played tennis though. That was a, that's the one major sport, I guess. Um, I like to watch UFC fighters. I especially like the the women. Amanda Nunes is like one of my favorite, and I will not call her Nunez. That's not how you pronounce her name. Uh, Rose Namajunas, uh, some my couple couple of my favorite fighters. I love uh, action sports. I was big into jet skiing for a while and doing tricks and stuff like that. Stuff that's very crazy wow. <laughs> and fun. Amazing. And I used to surf, and so yeah. I, I was actually a surfer through because, you know, Southern California kid, that's what you did. You grew up Dawn Patrol, you're out there at like 5 a.m. surfing. And I kind of gave it up in, in eighth grade because I don't know, I had other fun stuff to do. Well, we don't really touch on any of those here, but as the Garmy knows, I'm kind of a perennial pot stirrer when sports smack talk is concerned. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking yes. about an idea for like a fresh take on the segment. And Ralph, for me, it's always the agony of defeat. That's my favorite part, as long as it's not my team, right? Yeah, but right. We're talking like kids ugly crying in the fans, like surrender cobras, <laughs> breaking TVs, you know? <laughs> so on that note, like I, I had a crushing blow a couple weeks ago, as you know, as a Kansas City Chiefs fan. And it's not been a great, you know, I, the Eagles news report isn't much better on the NFL front, but there is no. trades and transfers to talk about. Is there any, any good, exciting Eagles trades and transfers? Well, you know, we're just losing everybody. They haven't yeah. started, they've just been subtracting. They haven't added yet, which concerns me. The but stacking of course, is still happening. Carson Wentz, who of course was, um, you know, touted as the next great franchise quarterback for the team, came on and was uh, playing at an MVP level when he first joined, and then injury after injury sort of whittled away at his confidence and his performance to the point where he's gone now. And um, we, uh, Deshaun really Jackson, broken. wide receiver, Deshaun Jackson has been released as well. We've lost our head coach during the offseason, so it's going to be a very different team coming back next season and I have no idea what to expect. It seems like they've, they've blown the whole thing up and they're just going to rebuild, which means like that's three or four seasons of me drunk on Sundays because uh, My favorite I'm in serious part. pain. Yeah. Oh, and I, you know, on your show, we don't touch on soccer talk or rugby, but you know, this is, this is the Lindsay sports talk. So right. be ashamed Mwah. not to mention that, you know, Steve Ashton's beloved Liverpool's on the agony board this week too, because they're like main defender. They're like big talisman star. Virgil van Dijk is out on injury. Um, and they took a beating from their crosstown rival Everton last week. So I have to like poke, you know, see if we get the Steve on the show now, if we get him all riled up, right? Oh, he'll, he will. He will. <laughs> Uh, and then we already heard from Owen yesterday on the virtual cocktail party about the Six Nations rugby win for his beloved Wales. So no yeah. need to cover that here. But um, the other thing that I, you know, being a Midwest kid from Iowa and Arkansas, like college basketball's king around here this time of year. And Arkansas actually normally sucks real bad. But right now we just beat SEC rivals Alabama and LSU in basketball to be like number 20 in the nation, which doesn't happen very often. So everyone's, I had a shout out to the hyper local market, right? With some absolutely. Yeah. Talk. How about you, Ralph? Are you a basketball fan at all? Not so much. Um, 
you know, growing up in Philly, the Sixers were always, 76ers were always sort of omnipresent, but I was never much of a fan. Although I went to a school, LaSalle University in Philadelphia, That's traditionally awesome. has a very strong basketball team. And so I would follow college ball just a little bit, but pretty much while I was there. But I'm mainly a, a football and hockey. Guy. That's, yeah. that's well hockey i did have a bit of hockey news too as far as the agony front didn't they just lose heinrich lundquist from the rangers to eddie's capitals yes it's pretty agonizing if you're a rangers fan but it is. maybe eddie one will be excited of, one of the great goaltenders um yeah the flyers are looking pretty good this season we had a big covid scare they had to take about four games off because some of their players showed up on the covid list but they're back playing and they uh they they played yesterday and they're playing again today. I'll be watching a little bit later. So, but it's nice because hockey's a nice long season. So you get to enjoy the ups and downs over the course yeah. of, the year, of the year. I just love men smashing into each other. It's good fun. That's a whole that's nother gonna show. Up, that's going to up our rating <laughs> that there. Note, that's going to finish up Lindsay's sports talk for this. Goodness. What an easy thing to segue from. Thank you, Lindsay. That's I appreciate that. There are whole that. websites you can go to for that, Lindsay. I think if that really worked for you. <laughs> We need to talk about browser histories again. No, we don't. Men <laughs> be... smashing into each other. Oh, Are they yeah. facing each other? Is one what's so good about way? rugby? I'm like, I don't oh. know what's happening out here, but I love watching it. Yeah. It seems they disorganized. Wear, they don't I wear hear pads or helmets or anything. Nothing. Bone crushing good fun. Yes. All right, kids. That's enough sports talk for me. Well, thank you for letting us know what the plays are of the week and the agonies of the week. This play session has been a ton of fun. And Ralph Garman, we can't thank you enough for coming on here and playing with us, having fun. My pleasure, ladies. So yeah, good. we and you know, I didn't get a chance to talk about this, but do you have any upcoming projects that you'd like to give us a little heads up on? Uh, what do I got coming up? I know um, you just filmed something. It's probably in post production, so I don't know if it's the right timing to say it. Gosh. I did. I'm sorry, Lindsay, go ahead. With Josh Roush, right? Yeah, I just did an independent little feature film with uh, Josh Roush, who people may know from Hollywood Babylon, is the guy who does sights and sounds when we do our live shows. He wrote and directed his first feature film this year and during COVID of all things, which is unbelievable, the level of the dedication and hard work he put into this. I play a, a cop in that, which was fun because that's always been sort of a long time schoolyard fantasy of mine to have a gun and a badge and run around and pretend to be a it's cop so, yeah exactly that was fun <laughs> uh, i got uh, some fun stuff coming up in kevin smith's new reboot of masters of the universe over on netflix i do a voice in that which is a lot of fun of course kevin's got uh, clerks three coming up this year I'm, i got a little role in that and the new uh the sequel to mall rats as well we're going to try to shoot both of those this year so thanks to my friends i i, I have some work coming up and my God, Ralph, is there That's nothing you fun. can't do? Well, when I have a movie, I also want you in it too. So there you go. I'm, look, I'm I'm easy to hire. If I got the time, <laughs> I show up on the set because I just love to play. And so uh, my friends know if they call me and if I can make it, I'm there because I just like I like doing it. I just like doing stuff. It, what I don't a have life. a career to worry about, which is nice. Yeah. So I don't ever have to make a decision based on what's good for my career. I can just pick what sounds like fun. Well, let's take in the fact that you, this is part of your life your side hustle for fun you do movies yeah that's true that is my side hustle okay and you know wild wildly popular podcast show the ralph report please if you are not subscribed to it go to patreon.com the ralph report seriously for 15 cents a day at least and don't do that because come on like you spend more on starbucks it's just silly and but, if you're uh, not sure if you'll like it don't you still put a free show out a week on like that's the true podcast test app? it out yeah, you can find a free show most weeks floating out there wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, I don't think I dropped one this week because I was kind of busy, but almost every week we put a free one out there for people to uh, get a little taste and see if that's something they'd be interested in. Try it out. Yeah, I guarantee yeah. you're actually going to laugh out loud and it's going to make your day better. And you're going to join a group of people that are so good. The Garmin, you everyone. feel like you're all caught up after you watch the show. We've just caught you up with the whole catalog. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> We've talked about the last three years now you can start fresh start fresh start new uh lindsay we're gonna say that you can be found still at lindsay from arkansas is that your preferred way the insta yes okay all right you guys know where to find me i'll put it in a card after this uh ralph garman it was a pleasure to have you and we hope to have you on as soon as we can steal you away from your studio again i would be happy and i want to tell you guys you know i've watched the, the show since the beginning 
since way back since the very beginning of the show. Um, what is it? Four now episodes? This is a four. Well, this is the yeah, fourth? it's a four technically, but you know. First. Okay. Oh, I forgot. Yeah, this was the first one. Um, and I have to tell you guys, you're already head and shoulders above where a lot of people start when they do these things. You guys hit the ground running, and I know what it's like to fill an hour of content. And you guys are charming and and knowledgeable and entertaining and lovely. And I, I expect many more people are going to be enjoying this show moving forward. So well, congratulations on what you've okay. done so far. Wow. <laughs> I'm getting teary-eyed. Okay. Uh, well, Hold it together. See that? <laughs> mm, I can't cry on uh, command, so those are real tears of happiness. Uh, but anyways, thank you so much for your kindness, for your generosity, for sharing yourself with us and the Garmy, for all of that and more. We look forward to hearing you again on Monday morning. Same bat place, same bat time, or whatever time's convenient for you. Until then, bye, everyone. Bye. bye.